Wait, I haven't done that. <laughs> I haven't even turned on the audio yet. show you uh, about a dozen different uh, sewing notions that will take your sewing from looking um, homemade to handmade. A tip that will help you a lot if you're trying to make a lot, say for Christmas gifts or even to sell things at a fair, um, is to have extra bobbins. When I'm sewing a lot, I fill as many as a dozen or more bobbins with whatever thread color I'm using. It just makes things go a lot faster because you just have to change that out. You don't have to continually re-thread your machine. Okay, this little guy uh, is called a bodkin and this one's seen a lot of love so it's a little bent out of shape but it still works as well as it did in the beginning is for putting uh, stuff through a casing and I like to pinch the elastic or whatever it is in half so you don't have a lot of bulk there. And then you just pull this down and tighten it as much as you can. And then it slides through your casing pretty easily and it's not that tiny little motion that you do when you use a big safety pin. Uh, this will just make it a lot easier to go fast and do what you've got to do. Bias tape makers. I usually don't make bias tape, I usually make mine along the grain and I'll show you why at some point when we're using it in a project. Um, but these will make bias tape of different sizes really quick and easy, especially if you also have um, a cutting mat. Uh, these are some of the turning tools that I have uh, laying around and I showed how to use them in um, the chili pepper tutorial and I'll probably just show that here for you. If you don't have these and you want to turn anything, uh, little shapes for some of the stuffed flowers and things that we'll do in future tutorials, you'll want to get your hands on some of this stuff. Two specialty threads that I really would miss a lot if I had never discovered them are wash away thread and fusible thread. I use the wash away to baste um, larger pieces. I usually put uh, real thread, usually black, so that I can see it in the top of the work and then the bobbin thread is the wash away and I usually pull out the thread before I stitch over it so that I don't have a lot of picking and accidentally sew through my black thread and have to really work on getting it out of my piece but whatever's left in the back just will wash away and I do wash my work as part of um, the process to do the raw edge quilting that I do. This is a fusible thread and this helps a lot when you're trying to do straight perfect bindings such as on a traditional pot holder as well as bindings on uh, wall hangings and other things like that you still stitch them either by machine or by hand but this will hold your work and then you're not sewing on something that has a whole lot of sharp pins sticking out of it you can uh, use this to hold it in place until you get to it with your hand needle I usually pin the corners and I will show that at some point. You're going to want to have a decent serger. This is as much for hems as for construction. A lot of times when you hem something, if you have to turn the edge twice, it's very time consuming to iron that down. Often you need to pin it as well. And uh, if you serge that edge and then turn it once, and stitch it, it's a lot faster, a lot less likely to pucker, and so that helps a lot in terms of making your work look professional. Another thing that you want to have is a really sharp seam ripper. 
I used to think that uh, seam rippers were heirloom items passed down through the generations, but the truth is uh, these work so much better if they're sharp. The best one I ever had came with my sewing machine and I think I got another one sometime but I must have lost it because I couldn't find it today. But anyway, if you're using an old dull one, replace it. Another item that really helps a lot to have is a magnetic pincushion. Uh, it's very convenient for when you're pulling things out, when you're sewing and putting your needles off to the side a lot faster. Also, uh, glass head pins. They're easier to see on the carpet especially as well as in your work. And then if you drop them on the floor, um, you can use the magnet itself um, to pick them up. A good cutting mat is an essential part of your toolkit along with a ruler and some kind of a suction handle as well as of course a rotary cutter. This will allow you to cut through uh, as many layers as you're comfortable doing, as many as your blade will handle, with sharp blades. Uh, nice thing to have, but I've certainly used blades long past uh, the point that I would want anybody to know. Um, this handle I like. I had a $7 handle. You can see it's popped off here. I had a $7 suction handle that lasted for years and it was great and then when it fell apart from use I replaced it and the new one that I got never held on and so I got this one and this is a pretty nice thing um, and it also looks like a telephone if you have kids around um, so I like this I liked my cheap one uh, that worked I didn't like the cheap one that didn't work Always close your blade. You want to have um, the best scissors that you can get your hands on. This is my favorite pair of scissors right now um, because it's spring loaded and you just need to close it. You don't need to also open it as you're going through um, the fabric. I feel that a good sharp pair of scissors devoted to fabric is essential as well as this type of scissor with the little curved um, blades. I don't know if you can see that but this is great because when you're snipping things it doesn't catch your work unless you're really missing your mark on what you're trying to cut. You can cut nice, nice and close without uh, cutting more than you want to. You want to have a good iron. This iron, uh, I've had three or four of these and they've all been great. Um, you might be able to see that I do put water in my iron um, as recommended. I've heard from some women who sew that they prefer to use a squirt bottle and their iron and I want to do my ironing with one hand and use my other hand to shape my work as I go. And so I go ahead and put water in this. I find that they last me until I drop them. And it, it happens in a busy sewing room every now and then. And you know, then I just have to bite the bullet and get a new iron. One thing I will say about this particular iron is that it will steam for me on silk at the top of my silk setting, which is important if you do silk scarves, which I do. Another tip that I have has to do with your iron and it is to put your iron on a power strip with a light. This way you can turn your iron off and on with your foot. And because I work a lot when I'm sewing I often have my iron set so that it will be on all the time rather than shut off with an auto switch. And so I like to be able to turn that off and on, but also the bonus is that with the light on the power strip, I can see from the door of my sewing room, even from my living room, if I've forgotten the light on. And that helps a lot too when I'm asking someone else in the family to go make sure that mom turned her iron off.
If you don't have a lot of specialty feet with your current sewing machine, uh, if you ever get to the point that you can upgrade, uh, consider these specialty feet. These are edgers. Um, this one goes to my big, big machine, this one goes to my smaller machine, and both of them do the same uh, type of thing. They allow you to sew very close along the edge of something um, such as this, meticulously uh, stitching a seam like that. Another foot that you want to look into is some sort of a darning foot. These go, uh, this to my big machine, this one to my other machine, and um, they just allow you to free motion quilt and see everything that you're doing. This is a walking foot. It goes to my little quilter and uh, it just keeps layers from pushing on each other so that you have progressive puckering down a seam and it just makes certain things that you do, including quilting it's with straight lines, um, effortless and beautiful. Four other general suggestions that I have, um, things that are really helpful if you want to uh, create sewing things. Find a way in your living space to have your sewing machine out. If it's in the closet it and comes out onto the dining room table or the kitchen table, it's much easier to put things off. Even the side of the guest room or you know somewhere where it's a little out of the way but can stay out, your machine is going to get used more, if you're like I am anyway, if you leave it out. Of course you want good lighting and I always recommend Netflix and chocolate. You can get really bored about the thousandth time you make something. And I look tired! You are scared slightly old and tired. So... <laughs> I said so. Slightly. Um, 